Hi, everyone. Uh, over the last few months, we've been working on the FinP2P interconnectivity network. It's a routing network that connects uh, financial institutions for the issuance, trading, and instant settlement of digital securities. Everything you will see today connects directly to the FinP2P API, which connects seamlessly across ledgers, across uh, custody providers, and settlement currencies. This is the group that, as we say, have leaned in um, and contributed to this POC phase of the pilot program. We're interconnecting 10 different diverse platforms through using the FinP2P APIs. Uh, and I don't think that has been done uh, to this scale with this amount of diversity of interoperability and, and integration. Um, before. The first interoperability functionality we're going to show is going to be based on Fabric. Let's imagine I'm in with Bank UK and I'm going to go as an admin into the Node uh, dashboard and one of my assets is called Huli. Now let's assume I want to share Huli with other institutions. Once that is done, I'm going to go to Bank US as the Node Manager and I will see assets there and uh, Huli will be here and I will now enable it. So what you've seen here is a, a two-sided authorization process. Now let's look at the user from Bank US. Uh, let's say Bob. Choose a thousand shares for a thousand dollars. Confirm transaction. And the transaction is done. This is the core fin P2P functionality. Every institution on the network can bring assets, share them with the other institutions, regardless of which ledger they use. Then the other institution can pick it up, make it available for their investors, and the investors can make instant transactions with any custody and with any settlement currency. Okay, great. So for those that aren't familiar, um, for, for this fin P2P in integration, we integrated our Project Whitney demo. The idea is that it's a centralized platform uh, that connects to multiple blockchains to allow for the tokenization of assets. So the scenario we'll look at here is for um, our issuer 21, who is Driftwood Interiors, a Delaware-based corporation. So I'll come to our security master file and I'll go create an asset for um, issuer 21, which is Driftwood that we just saw. It's going to be a Reg D 506C security, US Delaware-based corporation. Here we'll use um, public Ethereum. Next is the rules that we can associate with the security. So when I create those, we'll see a new TSIN, that's a tokenized security identification number of 131. You can see there's Driftwood Interiors. So the next step would be to do our, our book upload process. So this is really the primary offering, if you will. So now we have the option of those thousand outstanding shares, um, some to investor 73, which is Alice, who we can give her 200, but then the other 800 shares will push out into the Fin P2P network here. Admin can enable this asset for its owners, which will allow them to take part in this primary offering. We'll come and we'll allow of those you know, 800 shares available, Rob can take 250 of them, confirm that transaction, trying to you know, buy those assets. And we should see an approval here as soon as that transaction is validated. Moving on, I'm going to now do a quarter screen. So I'm going to click invest. And effectively, on the front end, it should look exactly the same, but we will see in the back end that the transaction is actually registered on Corda rather than on Fabric. So this is a, a Fabric to Corda example. Again, I'm going to put 500 shares just to see different numbers. Uh, confirm transaction. The transaction is done. Now uh, I want to show it on the Corda back end. And you can see that here are the 500 uh, tokens that we just transferred on Corda being actually uh, represented on the Corda blockchain. So we're going to be focusing during my demo on an asset, an ETF, where they are the control location associated with that particular fund. I'm going to bring it into my brokerage and engage in transactions with that particular asset on a variety of different networks. Now, what's cool about um, the FinP2P framework, of course, is I actually don't care which ledger was used for the issuing of that asset. I think in this case, it might be Corda, it might be Symbiant, uh, um, or maybe Fabric, I'm not sure. Actually, it doesn't matter. From my perspective, we're gonna pull it out and transact in the Stellar network. And now he's gonna actually transfer it via the Stellar network, peer-to-peer. -peer. This can be d directly done through a wallet provider, but all of Securancy's issuances, anytime they're on any of these ledgers, they're compliance aware. So it enforces the rule sets um, as imposed by the asset issuer. And again, this is an atomic cross-ledger transfer. It has been a very straightforward process. It's cool to be able to 
interact with all the other financial institutions and all the distributed ledger technologies that are connected in. And that general focus that I and team have had on hub and spoke model, where you basically make your connection and that allows you to connect to all the other pieces without having to do point to point uh, connections is, is the way this market is going to need to involve. I'm going to show the integration that we've done with Fireblocks. Let's start with the custody process. Uh, we're going to try to buy the Monsters shares with the Fireblocks custody service. So I'm going to click invest and I'm going to choose uh, the escrow service. I'm going to, let's say, a 1,000 uh, shares for $15,000. Uh, now, what's going to happen now when I click confirm transaction is that the custody process will start. I'm supposed to get a message on my phone, which I just received. And I'm going to, on my phone, I'm doing the uh, approval and then it's going to do my face recognition as well. Okay, I got it approved here and you can see it's approved here as well. Now, the second transaction uh, we're going to show is we're going to try and show a transaction through Fireblocks USDC uh, uh, through Ethereum. You will see that we furnished Bob uh, in advance with some money on the USDC Fireblocks account. Now we can go to Duke, click invest, choose the Fireblocks USDC account, uh, one share for $25. Let's go back to follow live what's happening in the uh, Firebox platform. So the first thing that happened is a transaction that basically puts the money in freeze until the security is actually being transferred on the quarter blockchain. And you can see that it's now broadcasting. We can find the transaction uh, live and you can see uh, that ERC20 tokens, there's a transaction from 42 seconds ago. A functionality in Fireblocks is called Transfer Assist that basically is able to coordinate uh, two digital legs. One of them, in this case, uh, is transferring the shares and the other one is transferring a stable coin. So here what we're seeing is the Symbian node. So you see here up on the left, it's Symbian. Uh, we've had the two companies that I mentioned that we have. So if I click here, for example, on Macmillan Toys, we can see who are the investors. Um, we are going to see that the investors are Bertha, Michael, and Dan. Bertha, and actually see the asset because Macmillan Toys was shared with the FinP2P network. So Bertha has invested in it. Michael from Symbiont has invested in it directly through the node. And also Dan externally came and invested on the asset. I'm going to have Michael buy some more stock on Macmillan Toys. So I just go here, I click invest. This is essentially the view on the Symbiont network itself. So this is looking at the, at the blocks directly. So I'm going to go as Frank from Symmetria. Now, the way that it works uh, with uh, GK8 is that when I create the transaction, uh, GK8 is doing their two-factor authentication through an SMS. So when I click confirm transaction here, I'm going to uh, soon get an SMS message. Waiting for it. It's arrived now. I'm going to click the link uh, here. It was successful on my phone and it was actually executed successfully as well. In this particular case, uh, GK8 is, is providing the MPC solution to, uh, for the, for the uh, Onera environment, uh, but GK8 does provide a full end-to-end -end digital asset platform, including a uh, very unique Cold Vault, as well as uh, a patented MPC solution. Um, and we're providing, uh, obviously, full key management and um, wallet creation and management uh, across the board. The next one that we're going to do is we're going to work with Victor, a custody solution. In this model, when I click invest, let's do a thousand uh, shares investment, confirm transaction. Now, what happens is I need to go to the, I go to the Pictor uh, uh, screen, and now you will see that there is a um, request for signature. Now, I have a physical dongle that is connected to my computer. So at this point, I need to click approve. And then I need to click platform and now I need to touch this uh, device. And after touching it, it's approved. And now if we go back, then the transaction is done. So, so Pictor is doing both the custody of digital assets, so any type of assets being on public blockchain or private permission blockchain, security token or uh, crypto assets. What is specific about Pictor is a network of financial institution that we use to decentralize the custody. In fact, we, uh, we co-developing with uh, a set of uh, some 10 financial institutions since uh, September 2019. Okay, so here we have a user uh, and Trent today will attempt to purchase uh, some shares of serious cybernetics. So we click invest. We use IVNO USD. It's worth noting that IVNO tokens can be of any denomination and we click confirm from the transaction. We'll see the transaction sign in the background and validate. And the shares are actually moving from the fabric chain, the settlements occurring on quarter. So there we see the balance decrease and the shares 
increase. If we move over to the issuer dashboard, we'll see the cash balance has increased and the shares have decreased. Ivno is all about instant value transfer uh, based on a tokenized underlying asset. One of our out-of-the-box solutions is BlackRock Money Market Funds. So that's uh, the way that we can uh, tokenize a high-quality underlying asset and that can be used in an immutable and immediate and instantly reconciled fashion uh, for the transfer of value between uh, between financial institutions. Now, Circle is also a USDC solution. Circle is actually the company behind USDC, and therefore the, okay. the connectivity here is to accounts within Circle itself. So I'm going to go as Bob, and I'm going to go to Perture. I'm going to make uh, an investment, and this time I'm going to choose the Circle and I'm going to take, let's say, uh, three shares for $30. I'm going to click confirm transaction. And now what happens is that the money is being transferred from the buyer's USDC account within Circle to the seller USDC account within, within Circle. Circle is a money services business. So we do fiat to USDC on ramps and off ramps. And this is kind of like the anchor product for Circle, which is just a USDC bank account, essentially. And then you can create a, a sub-account architecture for clients or sellers, for example. Beyond the anchor product of the USDC bank account are the APIs. Now that the FIM P2P protocol has been proven with leading companies in the digital security space, we are releasing the open source API specifications to any financial institution or technology provider who wishes to connect to the network. This is an exciting time for the global distribution and interoperability of digital securities and we look forward to you joining us in this growing ecosystem.